In this video, we're going to talk about a physical property of all materials known as resistance. In our previous video, we introduced the concept of voltage and current. We pointed out that voltage is a force that acts on charged particles, much like gravity is a force that acts on, on masses. And so voltage can be created through a number of different ways, batteries, generators, and so on. And that voltage has the capacity of doing some kind of work. And we all, in, 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 uh, in electrical systems, we typically have some sort of a load. That load could be a light bulb that we want to turn on and make light. Or it could be a motor. It could be the charger for your cell phone. It could be any number of different electrical devices that we want to drive with this voltage source. In order to do so, there has to be some kind of a connecting material between the voltage source and the load. When we make that connection, the voltage source is then able to force charged particles to the load and power the load. Now, as we talked about before, there are two different kinds of charged particles. There are positive charged particles and negative charged particles. Most of the time in electrical engineering, we'll talk about charged particles flowing, the, the charged part particles that are flowing will be electrons. When we get into semiconductor devices, it'll become important to talk about, under some circumstances, current being the flow of positively charged particles. But for now, the current that we'll be talking about is the flow of electrons from a source to a load. And that flow of electrons is known as current. We also pointed out that you don't just have one connector going from the voltage to the load, but you've got to have a return trip. There's got to be a complete circuit in order for the electricity to flow. Now, not all materials are equally capable of conducting electricity. It turns out metals are good conductors. Non-metals are not great conductors. And in some instances, some materials are such poor conductors that they're referred to as insulators. So as you're aware, wires typically will have a metal core, the conductor, and then around the outside of it there will be a rubber or a glass or some sort of a fibrous, fiberglass type material serving as the insulator. Okay, what is physically going on within materials that will account for this variation in ability to conduct electricity? We don't need a very sophisticated model of it of uh, materials in order to understand or at least to get a good working feel for what this concept of resistance is. We know that all materials, whether they're insulators or conductors, are made up of atoms and that each of these atoms have electrons associated with them. We also know that when we apply a voltage across this material and complete the circuit that the voltage force will cause the electrons to flow. Now some electrons will be going along, they'll bump into the atoms and bounce back. Other electrons will make it on through. And so those electrons that ultimately make it into this or make it all the way through the circuit represent our current flow the resistance of this current flow or the ability for the material to conduct electricity is a function of the number of electrons, the free electrons that are available, as well as the size of the atoms going through it. All right. We need to somehow be able to quantify and measure the either the resistance of these materials. How much do they resist the flow of electrons? Or the conductance, how, how well do they conduct electrons? It's two sides of the same coin. Conductivity, C-O-N-D-U-C-T-I-V, represented with the Greek letter sigma, is a measure of a material's ability to conduct the electricity. The, the larger the conductivity or value of conductivity, the greater its ability to conduct. There's another way of looking at the same concept. It's called resistivity. 
typically represented with the Greek letter rho, and that becomes or that is a measure of the material's likeliness or the measure of the material's resistance. How much does it resist the flow of electrons? As I mentioned, these two quantities are very closely related to each other. In fact, one is just the reciprocal of the other. Thus, conductivity and or resistivity are physical properties of materials. And we use materials to make electrical devices. Resistivity and conductivity are properties of the materials themselves out of which we're going to make the devices. We'd like to have some kind of macro measure of the total resistance of a device based upon the resistivity of the material it's made out of. A little bit of thinking will suggest that um, the longer the device is, the more resistance those electrons are going to experience. On the other hand, the larger the cross-sectional area of the device, the less resistance they will experience. Or to put it another way, the greater the, the opening, the more electrons are able to flow through. It's like with a pipe. If you've got a small pipe, you don't get nearly as much water going through it as you do a large pipe with the same amount of pressure across the pipe. Some examples of different resistivity values, just to show the difference between conductors and insulators. The resistivity of copper is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 8. So on the order of 10 to the minus 8 for conductors. And then insulators, on the other hand, have resistivities on the order of 10 to the plus 12. So 10, what is that, 10 to the 20th times greater resistivity in an insulator than in a conductor. Now just for completeness at this point, let's introduce the concept of a semiconductor. A semiconductor has values of resistivity that are greater than those of conductors and less than those of insulators. Semiconductors, of course, are the devices that transistors and integrated circuitry are made out of, and we'll spend a lot of time in later classes talking about semiconductors and the way you can make a semiconductor either conduct electricity or insulate against the flow of electrons.